boy back here in Diajo Choi. Uh, what is this battle again? It starts with a P and I probably can't pronounce it. Paraitasine. Um anyway. <laughs> at the beginning at the end of last turn I forgot about when a particular roll takes impact, which is the elephant line roll. Um and made another mistake because of that, which is I activated some of uh, these elephants back here. When, uh, given that there was a launched attack along here, I may want to drop a couple of elephant leaders in place to create an elephant line attack. Now, this is kind of complicated because <sighs> the rules for this scenario, well, for this, uh, is it just this scenario? Yeah, I think it's just this scenario. Uh, regarding elephants, are that they have these uh, elephant skirmisher line combination. And if you're using this rule with that, then you can't take advantage of that combination quite as easily as you would be able to otherwise. Uh, presumably, I could actually... This guy's not in a zone of control, so I could create a line going, not here, he's in a zone, but over this entire force with Antigenes. Assuming he makes his initiative roll because he's not quite in range of his, uh, his commander. Um, that's one possibility, which might be the better thing. It might be better to ignore the elephant line rule in this particular scenario because otherwise, if I have the elephant lines, I could slap a couple down. I could put somebody over here and he could command this. And again, it's a mixed line running honestly the whole line. <laughs> but it would have to... It succeed on its initiative check, I believe. If I... I do not get orders. Let's see. At the end of the turn, it doesn't have that elephant line need leader who will tend to go first in the following turn. When the elf turn leader goes, all elephant lines in that line may move. That, it doesn't even indicate that there's a roll. So... You know, I really don't know. That sounds like a cheap way to get a line command that he couldn't otherwise create, or maybe it's worded wrong. So I'm kind of tending towards ignoring the elephant line rule and going with him having to make his momentum check for the, uh, well, his initiative check to see if he can get a line command off and just screw that rule. I forgot that worked indefinitely. Uh... The advantage of uh, our antagonist side was, well, at least in terms of intentions, uh, recovery points uh, for uh, for quality hits, whatever, cohesion hits. Uh, you can't play them if you're within range of enemy missile firing capability. And I think I did. Uh, I think, for example, this guy recovered. Maybe not. <laughs> Um, but I think I recovered some and now I'm looking and that looks really unlikely for the most part. If we take a look at the missile table, those uh, mounted archers go out to range three. So yeah. the elephants pretty much prevent me from recovering and I'm kind of just facing them in an ugly situation where they will be able to whittle me down through attrition at this point. Another push forward by the phalanxes, but I ran into another roll I'm fucking up. <laughs> I, you know, elephants don't generally come in until later uh, in, in, in the scenarios. And there are some of the more complex roles in the game, but uh, what I missed was pass-through attacks. After completing shock attack, if they're unrouted, the elephants run through the enemy. Um, do 
there was no pass through avoidance as in our sister game, mainly because the Macedonians had not faced them and apparently had not developed it. So my defense against elephants may have been better than it should be, but it also meant that um, the Eumenes elephants were in the way for those phalanxes to go smash into. And we're not essentially out here unable to be commanded or whatever. So ah, a little less cast than we should have had, but um, probably largely to the Antigonus um, negative. Now, again, yeah, I pushed forward with those phalanxes, didn't take any losses this time, killed a couple of elephants. But again, I'm positioned against the heavy infantry of my enemy and in not as good a shape. So that doesn't look like a good situation. Now I did, uh, I think both the fours here, I'm really uncomfortable with uh, the system. And that gets me to the other four here. I, I did one over there. So yeah, I'm in the right place, but I need to walk away a little bit. Uh, like I said, I'm bound to make a bunch of mistakes uh, throughout this one, but, you know, um, relearning the system, basically. I know that even when I had played it not long before, uh, going to, like, uh, uh, Monster Con, whatever, uh, Con Sim World Expo. Uh, go, going there, I played a few pickup games, <coughs> and I would all, almost invariably have forgotten, you know, half the system. I, I, it's kind of like an SFB type game, unless you embed yourself in it and play it a whole lot. It's hard to remember what's going on. And, you know, when I'm soloing, eventually I get, I think, Think to a level of competence, but it's hard to tell because sometimes, you know, when I face an opponent or something, they pull a rule out that I didn't remember, <coughs> and I'm not sure I ever played, you know? <laughs> so, it's more the experience than anything else. And the cab fight begins over here. Uh, again, you know, doing a line command seems weird, <laughs> so I used my contingent pushed them forward a little bit, and launched a couple of charges. This is kind of piecemeal, and probably won't work well, but we hit some light cav and did quite a bit of damage on it. And then we failed any continuation, which means if there's a five over here, and there's at least one, oh, those guys are going to go. It's hard to remember how the system works, but uh, those piecemeal heavy cav attacks, they were... Knocked back by some Lancers, able to hit flanks, get uh, positional superiority from that, and that gives them double damage and whatnot. And no pursuits happened. Uh, you can see the charge formations are gone off of uh, the Lancers, just as they were off the heavy cap. And I think that throws us over here. <sighs> I'm struggling so much trying to play this. Uh, looking up, you know often two, three rolls every time I move uh, a formation. Left with a real conundrum over on this side. I can't afford to engage, but I have to. Um, I don't know if it's just psychological. Honestly, I think it's got more to do with, hey, if I don't engage, he's going to engage, and I can't afford that either. So I might as well get the first strike in that gets me an advantage. But I just don't have enough route points left. Uh, to survive, you know, opening up another front, essentially. <laughs> um, and I haven't caused anything like the amount of damage to threaten uh, the Minis side. I, you know, I lost this battle in that, uh, not the first elephant wave, but in the reaction to it pushing the phalanxes forward. And there's not much I can do about that. Uh, in some games, I'd be grumping my ass off, but here I'm like, well, yep, <laughs> I should have known better. Uh, it's my own fault I did not look up those numbers, but, you know, I mean, 
that's my higher tolerance for the complexity of tactical warfare being represented in a game and me not being competent at the tactical warfare, uh, you know, not understanding that, nah, phalanxes aren't going to be able to push it against elephants. Um, in, in terms of making the attack, they can hold their line. Uh, and, you know, an equally difficult to maybe discern in terms of, like, if you don't have knowledge uh, 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 that I should have had here, uh, an equally difficult uh, ability to discern from the games itself, looking at the charts and all that, in some sort of Euro. But here I'm like, yep, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You know, uh, I learned my lesson and maybe I won't make the same mistake next time. Well, I had to check. I thought I remembered it, but had to find it to prove it out. And again, I'm having to check rules on everything. Um, when you move into, when you move next to a unit, it's a lot of, uh, a single hex unit, it's a lot of facing change. Um, <coughs> so it's very hard to flank a unit, is basically the issue. Uh, but, and it's also allowed, and this I wasn't sure of at all, uh, I, I vaguely remember the other thing, but I, I thought that before at least I had made it so that they couldn't do their reaction fire. They got one or the other. No, they get their reaction fire too. So they get to, they have time to see you coming and position themselves. And I actually really like that. Um, the thing is, if you can over, if you can outnumber the enemy, you can stick more units in. <laughs> I got different units. I got an elephant I threw in here because he doesn't seem to be limited as to what he can command. Demetrius. Which makes sense. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. On the other hand, there's nobody who can command this shit. So it's a little safer than I thought. Uh, and we kind of won, I guess. <laughs> a little bit, sort of, kind of. Um, yeah, we actually have a significant advantage until you manage can get over there on that flank. So that's... Uh, that's actually something interesting to look at. Speaking of which, Eumenes is up next, and he is the last on that side. And then I should have one more over here. And I don't think we're going to break uh, the Antigonus faction at this point. Um, one of the things is, you know, the units that hit early in the game, skirmishers, elephants, and phalanx units and hoplite and the double size hoplites. Um, those are all units that don't stay on the board. They are either wrecked, they, they either disappear and are destroyed, or uh, have some lasting power terms of the phalanx units if they're wrecked. Um, but now we're beginning to see the routes on the board. <laughs> um, the game does, you know, it's kind of funny because Berg is often accused of the rubber routes. And this game has that. This is Berg and Herman together. Um, but um, at least by the edition that I'm on, this fourth edition or whatever, uh, no, maybe it's pre-fourth. Whatever it is, the deluxe fourth edition, yeah, um, has, uh, which is far less deluxe than whatever came after it. <laughs> Thinner counters and everything. Um, which is very noticeable. The counters from um, the expansions phalanx and diadache that I picked up have much much thicker smoother counters different different printing whatever um, that match the new edition and yeah, part of me is like oh I should just order new uh, edition pieces but it's kind of useful because it helps me sort them out um, anyway uh, what was I going to say I'm sure I had something to say. Oh, yeah, the routes. So, 
Yeah, so the rules actually call out that, hey, units would be really, really unlikely to go, like when units were outed, they generally threw their weapons away, their armor, whatever, so that they could get out of there quicker. And it would be almost impossible to bring them back to the field. Yet the game system actually allows them to pretty easily. So I think I've mentioned that in another, another uh, time, maybe with the same system, uh, maybe with the same game, uh, because I don't think the earlier editions mentioned that. I made the kind of stupid mistake that's just going to drag out this game, <laughs> which is he's not quite within range to issue a line command. I'm just pushing him up there because the point is he can make his way across the field while giving orders. Uh, so I don't have to make him completely useless. And those orders, well, <laughs> they might be enough to brush uh, aside enough of those hoplite unit or phalanx units to finish the game off. Um, otherwise, if I didn't issue a line command on the first command, I won't be able to do one later on in a, on a momentum either, if I recall correctly. So it's like, yeah, you know, all I did was just ran him, you know, as far in this direction as I could. And I could have been one hex further back, but in position to issue that line command. And I don't know, you know, maybe I thought he was going to issue the line command. I, but his chances were low. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit here and maybe end the game a little early that way. Now, uh, <laughs> I was in the midst of starting these battles, just about to hit this one. And I heard my phone ring, so I go down. And it's the medical examiner. And that first time I've been contacted since, you know, maybe early March or something. And it's like, it just throws me into another fucking tailspin. <laughs> And then I come back up here, and first thing I do is I move my chair to sit down on it. Because that's what one does with chairs often. And uh, a screw falls out, and it turns out all the screws were loose holding the, <laughs> the seat in place. One of them's missing. Uh, so a little bit of distraction there. We'll see if I can make it through the rest of this turn. <laughs> I just hit a phalanx with a non-phalanx, and that phalanx is anchored on two sides. That wasn't a pleasant uh, table to be on. <laughs> I was down on the 6-4-2 uh, table, I think it was. Uh, I owe another hit to that, then. I doing this before, and it's technically necessary. Um, these guys are actually on the board, briefly. You can't try to rally them, and they die at the end of the turn and count towards victory points, but yeah, we sent one running. Uh, again, it wouldn't have mattered in the last one, but at this point, <coughs> we got units close enough in that it might. And with an additional 24 points going off the table at the end of this, this scenario is over. Uh, there's really nothing else to do. This is the last activation uh, I, this is the last leader who can activate, so if I just put the game in my pocket at this point, I've won. Uh, presumably, I could keep moving and doing stuff, but I don't see a point to that uh, to try to get over here. I, the game was decided, again, as I've said before, by that move to hit the elephants with the phalanxes, which may have been uh, <laughs> allowed by the fact that the elephants didn't go charging through the phalanxes. Um, elephants are tough motherfuckers, and <laughs> if you want to use them that way. And uh, yeah, that was the end of that. So, okay, I made a lot of blunders, and uh, you know, I'm kind of clunking around getting used to this and the uh the system again uh it, it, it's a tough system you know i was so excited when i first came to it that that excitement carried me through and i never really got too far away from it while i was in phoenix i know when i came back uh to hoplite and and then back to this but i had played hoplite not that long after, or not that long before. It was easier. 
uh, or it was a little harder than it had been when I was just doing the string of SPQR stuff. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and I think the answer, I, I, I think the lesson learned here is uh, don't stop playing it for years and years on end. I mean, honestly, I've been here for four years. It was probably a year in Phoenix that I wasn't playing it before that. And much more than a year's time in between uh, definitely makes this system hard to re reacclimate to. Um, of course, you know, uh, there's significant differences in some of them. Uh, so, you know, like when I played the uh, uh, Samurai one, which I know I did, uh, as well as the SPQR, I had, uh, I had sort of a, it, it was a significantly different system from SPQR. And this is closer to SPQR, but again, it doesn't have all the funkiness of the command rules for the, uh, for the Roman units. Uh, I'm really kind of worried about when I get back into the Romans for the civil wars and stuff like that. But, eh, that's life. Oh, the chariots. Well, the chariots was really easy to pick up. Uh, the system was lighter than, than this or than SPQR. And, uh, and boy, was it exciting watching those chariots fly around the board. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll clean this up, and I, I think I'll be getting to another one of these right away. Uh, I know sometimes I like to interspace between the battles. These are all big battles in this in this uh, in this particular set, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure how phalanx is. Oh look, there's a big old map in phalanx. Well, there isn't a lot. I thought we already did Mantinia or Manatea or something like that. So only two battles, and I'm guessing that they're pretty big too. So we got a lot of richness in terms of uh, what happens. Of course, they don't last that long, you know. <laughs> At least not if you're ah, too violent. All right, we'll stop trying to do things one-handed and send this up.